Welcome to my channel. This is Captain Binoy Varagil, Assistant Professor, Department of English, St. Joseph's College of Gilgore Court, Kerala. We discuss Aristotle's The Poetics, and this is the third lecture in this series. So far, we looked at uh, the biographical details of Aristotle. We also looked at uh, the chapters 1 to 6 of the Poetics in detail and today in this lecture, uh, the third lecture in this series, we are looking at chapter 7 and 8 of uh, the Poetics. So we are already into a very serious discussion of tragedy. We know that Aristotle uh, Aristotle's plan in the Poetics is to help his disciples understand what poetry is and uh, the, po the Poetics is, is, is about poetry on one side, kinds of poetry and uh, the other side it's about uh, the tragedy and uh, he compares uh, tragedy and epic in uh, most of the chapters. Say for example we have 26 chapters about all the 26 chapters, five chapters are meant for descriptions of uh, classifications and uh, uh, evaluations and an analysis of uh, poetry and all the other 20 plus chapters are about the uh, drama, uh, tragedy and uh, the epic. And uh, in chapter 6 we had described uh, the uh, tragedy and we just remember the very famous definition of tragedy and uh, we also saw the different parts of tragedy and we know that tragedy has six parts like plot, character, thought, diction, song and spectacle and uh, we defined it and now in this chapter, chapter 7, we are discussing uh, the, the the plot in detail and we know that we have heard that plot is the soul of tragedy according to Aristotle and now Aristotle goes on to describe the elements of plot in chapter 7 and uh, let us understand what are the elements of plot so uh, the elements of plot are number one completeness number two magnitude number three unity and number four determinate structure and number five universality and we have to understand what all these five elements are in detail okay so uh, as Aristotle has already laid down that tragedy is the representation of an action that is complete and whole and of a certain amplitude for a thing may be whole and yet lack amplitude. Now uh, a, a whole is that which has a beginning, middle and an end. So what is, what is a whole? A whole is something, a whole is that which has a beginning, middle and an end. And, and that is in fact uh, the very definition of plot, right? So now we have to look at a beginning. What is, what is beginning? Okay, so a beginning is defined as an origin by which something naturally comes to be. So a beginning is an origin by which something naturally comes to be. And what is an end? A end, uh, meanwhile, follows another incident by necessity but has nothing necessarily following it. So with end, everything finishes or concludes and there isn't anything after that. And what is middle? A middle follows something just as something must follow it. Thus, well-constructed plots must neither begin nor end in a haphazard way 
but must conform to the pattern I've been describing. So this is of course the definition of uh, plot. So uh, he, he says that uh, 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 the, the the plot has five elements in it. They are completeness and uh, completeness has been defined right now or whole has been defined right now. A whole is that which has a beginning, middle and an end and that is plot. And now of course let us look at uh, he also says about completeness in a different way. So completeness refers to the necessity of a tragedy to have a beginning, middle and end. So tragedy must have a beginning, middle and an end. And a beginning is defined as an origin by which something naturally comes to be. Okay. And now uh, it, it is a plot has completeness. It has magnitude. What's magnitude? What is magnitude? Magnitude refers to the length the tragedy must be of a length which can be easily embraced by the memory. So this is very crucial. What is Aristotle's opinion of the length? Okay, and in the definition we saw that uh, it is of course a representation of an action that is complete and whole and of a certain amplitude or magnitude and uh, the length of a tragedy must be that that it is easily embraced by the memory people can the spectators can remember it and in the subsequent part of chapter 7 he speaks uh, in, in detail about the other elements like uh, we have completeness magnitude unity determinate structure and universality so uh, uh, he speaks about all these concepts also in chapter uh, 7. Okay, so uh, that said, uh, 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 so much said about magnitude and completeness, Aristotle believes that the longer a tragedy, the more beautiful it can be, provided it maintains its beginning, middle and end. And in the sequence of these three acts, the tragedy will present a change from bad fortune to good or from good fortune to bad. So uh, he also says that beauty of a tragedy is bound up with size and order. Okay, so now let us just uh, go for uh, a, a very detailed discussion of uh, uh, what he says about the the magnitude again. So we know that according to him, beauty of a play is bound up with size and order. Order is very important, and order comes in this particular uh, definition of tragedy. Like tragedy must have in mean, a plot. Plot must have beginning, middle, and end. Okay. So uh, he says right whatever is beautiful whether it be a living creature or an object made up of various parts must necessarily not only have its parts properly ordered but also of an appropriate size for beauty is bound up with size and order so it's it's good that so here Aristotle speaks about the plot of a tragedy and how beauty or of course uh, uh, maybe how the tragedy is becoming a success and there he speaks about the the very plot okay and uh, it, although okay he, he says that uh, uh, beauty is bound up with size and order and here it's good that we remember maybe the uh, very wonderful poem of uh, William Blake in which he is just uh, describing a wonderful tiger, right? So look at that poem, The Tiger of uh, William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? So just like that, 
it is of course the size and the very very uh, order or the proportion of the the, the 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 very body of the tiger that makes it a wonderful creature like uh, it's, it's very very beautiful to see but uh, it also creates fear in us okay so just like that beauty of a tragedy is bound up with its plot, its size and order. And uh, uh, a, a, a minutely small creature, therefore, would not be beautiful, for it would take almost no time to see it, and our perceptions of it would be blurred. So a, tra a tragedy must be of some amplitude, some length. If it's very small, okay, uh, we won't be able to perceive uh, it, it, it in the right way. So it should be uh, uh, at almost, of course, uh, it, it should be rather long. So a, a minutely small creature or a very small uh, plot or if, if we don't have enough length for the tragedy, it, it won't be beautiful because we can just look at it, we can just watch it, we can even enjoy it in a very small span of time, right? But if it's big, of course, we need more time too. So Aristotle is of the opinion that it should be rather long and uh, nor would an extremely large one for it could not be taken in all at once and its unity and wholeness would be lost the view of the beholder if for example there were a creature a thousand miles long so this is right this is very this uh, particular uh, uh, comparison or other uh, of of the plot or of of a tragedy the size of a tragedy the length or the magnitude of a tragedy to a creature it should not be neither a very small creature nor a very huge long creature. If it's very small, we will be able to uh, view this, perceive it in a very small, in very quickly. But if it's so large and long, we won't be able to look at it uh, maybe in hours. But it should be of uh, equal, or rather something like uh, in the definition, of a certain amplitude. Certain amplitude, that is of course which we can just uh, 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 magnitude refers to, uh, to to of course the very length of the tragedy that is of course right uh, the uh, must be of a length which can be easily embraced by the memory we can remember so uh, it should not be very small it should not be very very large and long like uh, we saw some time ago, Aristotle says that the plot of a tragedy should confine to a single revolution of the sun, 24 hours. Now, it, in, in just the same way as living creatures and organisms compounded of many parts must be of reasonable size so that they can be easily taken in by the eye, so two plots must be of a reasonable length, so that they may be easily held in the memory. The limits in length to be observed in as far as they concern performance on the stage have nothing to do with dramatic art. For if a hundred tragedies had to be performed in the dramatic contest, they would be regulated in length by the water clock, as indeed it is said that there were at one time with regard uh, to, to the limit set by the nature of the action. The longer the story is, the more beautiful it will be, provided that it is quite clear. To give a simple definition, a length which as a matter either of probability or of necessity allows of a change from misery to happiness or from happiness to misery is the proper limit of length to be observed. So this part of the chapter that is of course the final 
uh, passage of uh, chapter 7, Aristotle says that in a play there must be a change of situation, a change of situation from misery to happiness or from happiness to misery. All right. So this change of situation took, uh, should, should take place naturally and the play, the tragedy must have maybe a proportionate length so that the spectators understand that this is quite okay, that this change from misery to happiness is okay. So I should says that the plot should not be very, very small and should not be very long, but it should be of maybe appropriate length. It should be of uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, we have the definition yeah, of a certain amplitude, certain amplitude, the, the, such, such a magnitude or such an amplitude which is easy for the spectators to remember, memorize. Okay, so with this Aristotle concludes chapter 7 and uh, he just, uh, in, in, in the chapter again, he just speaks about five elements of the plots, but he doesn't complete his description of uh, all the five elements like, uh, he says, completeness, magnitude, unity, determinate structure and universality are the five elements of uh, the plot, but he only speaks about the uh, first element that is completeness and of course the second element that is magnitude. So completeness is nothing but beginning, middle and an end and magnitude is of course the length of a tragedy and he says that the suitable length of a tragedy is of course uh, such a length that is easy for the spectators to memorize and having uh, uh, spoken in detail about uh, the scope of the plot okay chapter 7 is also as I said some time ago titled the scope of the plot having said about the scope of the plot he goes on to speak about the third element of plot that is unity of plot in chapter 8. Let's just move on to chapter 8 of the poetics. Okay, so what is unity? Very important. Uh, a plot does not possess unity. As some people suppose, merely because it's about one man, many things, countless things indeed may happen to one man and some of them will not contribute to any kind of unity and similarly he may carry out many actions from which no no single unified action will emerge it seems therefore that all those poets have been on the wrong track who have written a heraclid or a thesid or some other poem of which of this kind in the belief that Heracles being a single person his story must necessarily possess unity. Homer exceptional in this as in all other respects seems whether by art or by instinct to have been well aware of what was required. In writing Odyssey Homer did not put in everything that happened to Odysseus that he was wounded on Mount Parnassus, for example, or that he feigned madness at the time of the call to arms, for it was not a matter of necessity or probability that either of these incidents should have led to the other. On the contrary, he constructed the Odyssey round a single action of the kind I have spoken of and he did this the Iliad too. Thus, just as in other imitative arts, each individual representation is the representation of a single object, so too the plot of a play being representation of an action must present it as a unified whole, okay, and uh, its variations, various incidents, 
must be so arranged that if any one of them is differently placed or taken away, the effect of wholeness will be seriously disrupted. For if the presence or absence of something makes no apparent difference, there is no real part of the whole. So all that I was reading from chapter uh, 8 of uh, the Poetis, very detailed uh, description of what unity is and very easy to understand. Okay, so unity of plot refers to the centering of all plots action around a common theme or idea. So um, when we look at any drama, like uh, maybe let us think of uh, Shakespeare's uh, tragedy, uh, Othello, King Lear, uh, Macbeth uh, or Hamlet, we will uh, we understand that all the incidents are e important in the play. Okay, so no incident can be just deleted. If an incident is deleted, the entire play suffers and that is the unity. All the incidents are very, very inseparably connected in, uh, in, in, in a play and that is unity of uh, uh, plot. Let us just look at uh, unity once again, right? As we have it in the slide, unity refers to the centering of all the plots action around a common theme or idea. Yes, overvolting ambition of Macbeth. And uh, because he is ambitious, because Lady Macbeth is ambitious, they do a lot of crime and all the crime they do is crucial in creating different emotions of pity and fear in the spectators. Similarly, we have, of course, very determined structure for the play or uh, that we can see even in Hamlet. Every incident, like uh, the prey tags, pyramidical structure of the play, we have the exposition, we have the initial incident, rising action, crisis, denouma or falling action and catastrophe. So uh, all these stages, five stages, okay, are formed with very significant incidents and no incident can be just uh, deleted. So uh, unity refers to the centering of all the plots action around a common theme or idea. Very important. So what is unity? Question. And uh, next we have determinate structure. What is determinate structure? Determinate structure refers to the fact that the plot all hinges on a sequence of casual imitative events. So if one were to remove even one part of the plot, the entire tragedy will be disjointed and disturbed. More simply, every part of a good plot is necessary. This is very important. Every part of a good play is, a plot is, good plot is important. Okay, so uh, uh, with that, chapter uh, 8 comes to an end. Aristotle very effectively speaks about uh, how the soul of tragedy, the plot of tragedy must be arranged, must be complete and whole and uh, must, mm, how, how, or wh wh why or how it should have a beginning, middle and end and uh, all the incidents must be so inseparably connected. Okay, and if one incident is taken away, the entire play collapses. So these are, of course, uh, his ideas about the uh, uh, unity of plot and the scope of plot, chapters 7 and 8. We have discussed these two. So now we have to, of course, go for go forward to chapter 9, which is titled Poetry, Truth and History. So these uh, uh, concepts, Poetic Truth and History, we will discuss in the next video lecture. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. So we will be looking at each and every chapter of the poetics in detail. And afterwards, we'll be discussing some of the important themes, topics and questions and answers in this series of lectures. This is the end of the third lecture in this series of uh, discussion on Aristotle's poetics. 
Bye-bye and God bless.